Hi, I'm G, this is my art channel, and in this video I'm showing you how I painted an orchid in watercolor in real time and using just a single color. So in the first part of this series, you saw me paint the background in watercolor, and if you missed that one, there's a link for that below. In this one, I'm gonna be showing you how I painted the flower itself. But the first thing I need to do is be honest with you. And after finishing the last video and doing that background, I decided there were a few extra areas that I wanted to tweak and I wanted to change, maybe make a bit darker. So what I'm including here is just a little bit of speeded up footage showing you exactly what I did and perhaps what I changed in the interests of honesty and transparency. So the first thing you can see me doing here is I'm putting some of these background areas in with another layer of color. So I'm making some of those bits darker because I was comparing it to the photograph and I thought, yeah, that dark green in the photo, I haven't quite managed that with the purples that I've done in the background. So a lot of what I do here when I tweak the background is I'm just putting an extra layer of purple color in here that makes some of these areas a little bit darker than they looked at first. I'm also aware that some of the petals uh, on the other flowers in the background were a bit too white and would perhaps stand out a little bit too strongly when I started painting. So I do go in here with a little bit of the violet, uh, Windsor Violet Dioxidine and I just darken some of these, not too much because I don't want them to get sucked into the background too much, but I do want to darken some of these petals and give them a bit more of a dark tone so that they will recede hopefully and let the actual um, flower, the, the orchid that I'm going to paint in this video, let that stand out and come into the sort of foreground a little bit more. These aren't necessarily changes that I wanted to make because if you've seen the first video, you know that what I try to do is do it quite watery, quite fuzzy, quite wet into wet. So it was going to be a little bit fuzzy and indistinct. So I didn't want to have to go in and tweak anything and sharpen anything up. But I thought I really needed to do that in the interest of getting that kind of tonal balance and, you know, darkness to the background, which would m let the many layers that I'm going to put on the orchid in the foreground really kind of shine and really look a bit more see-through and delicate and very, very luminous. So after just tweaking a few bits of the background and adding a bit of darker colour, I'm ready to actually start painting the orchid flower itself, which is of course the main subject of the whole painting. So as I start up here in the top left hand corner, I'm using a big brush, the size 6 round, and I've mixed a whole bunch of a very light pale colour. There you can see it in the palette there, right next to my painting. And I'm using this very pale kind of colour to paint in some of these areas to begin with. Uh, I've started in the top left hand corner so that I can work, you know, downwards and I hopefully won't smudge any of the paint that I'm putting on because of course it's watercolour so it stays quite wet, quite damp for a long time. So if I put some down in the bottom corner and then started to move upwards, I'm going to smudge that and I'm going to lift it up on my, my palm of my hand and I don't want to do that. So I'm starting in the top left, keeping with the size 6 because I've got a big area here that I'm trying to paint and I'm still using that light colour from the palette, the one that I've already mixed up so I know that it is a nice even color. As I paint it across the entire surface here of this petal of the orchid, I know that it's not gonna get irregular, it's not gonna get too dark or too light because I'm using this color that I have mixed with water and with the half pan in the actual palette itself. And my sort of main bit of advice here is always mix more than you think you're gonna need. There's nothing worse than painting something with a whole bunch of watercolor wash that you've made in a palette and you run out halfway through and you have to mix some more. You either get a drying line or it is too dark or too light and it you know completely changes halfway through and it's really irritating. So always mix more than you think you're gonna need. So you might be looking at this and thinking, well, he's painting quite a bit of purple on straight away, and yet this is a white orchid. Yeah, it is a white orchid, but if you look at the picture, you can see it's kind of an off-white. It's not a full-on bright white. And this is why usually when I'm doing a piece, I use a reference photo with, I leave the white border of paper around it, because that is what I think of as being pure white. So anything in the picture that looks like it might be a white, I can compare that to the white border that's around my reference photo and I can tell whether it's a bit darker than white or it is an actual pure white. So that's what I'm doing here. I can see that this white orchid is a kind of off-white and that's what I'm trying to do with this very first light kind of wash of the um, Windsor Violet Dioxidine. I've deliberately mixed it up nice and pale so I'm putting on hopefully a wash of kind of purplish color which is only a little bit more purple than basically the white paper. It also looks a little bit uneven as I put the paint on here because I'm using a, uh, a rough paper, a textured paper, so it looks like it's filling all of these little um, divots and, and kind of 
uh, pot marks in the paper surface, but as it dries, that will totally even out and give you a much more even layer of color. Here, I switched to a size three round brush. So I've switched up to a, a thinner brush again here because I'm doing a very small, delicate bit near the top. And uh, if I keep, kept using the size six round, it might be a bit too big, holding a bit too much paint, and it might flood that poor little area at the top. So that's one of my main reasons for switching up and using a thinner brush. It holds less water, yes, but that can actually you know, stop you making a bit of an accident where you didn't want to make one. So here I'm using exactly the same um, paint that I'd mixed in that palette because I mixed lots of it and I'm putting in this middle section, this little area that's in between these two main petals of the orchid and just giving that one kind of light base coat. And while I've still got that paint in the palette, I'm also giving a little sort of basic kind of light coat of paint to this middle bit, this kind of knobbly bit in the very middle uh, of the orchid, which the, the petals will grow up and outwards from. So I'm just giving that a little bit of um, color and a little bit of tone as well. So you can see straight away, this is a very different approach to the way I did the background. With the background, I was slapping in color, letting it run around using raw color and just watering it down. Here I'm taking a much more considered and careful approach of building up all of my colors here and all my tones in layers. Start with my lightest first and I should then end with my darkest color. So there you go, it's dried out a little bit, going a little bit closer. And what I'm doing here is I'm just taking the putty rubber, a little putty eraser that I've sort of tweaked into a very, very fine edge. And I'm gently going over and rubbing out some of the more visible pencil lines um, so that the paint will form a border and an edge between dark and light areas rather than it being a pencil line that does it instead. So you might be looking at this thinking, whoa, this is totally different to the way you did the first one. That one was all watery and splashy and letting the colors run together. This is a lot more controlled as I'm putting on each of these pale areas of color, these layers of color. You're right, it is a different approach. Uh, and I did explain when I was doing the first video that the reason I wanted to use a different approach on this one, a more layered up approach with my colors, was because I want this to stand out as being um, different to the background. The background was all kind of fluid and, and floody and so on. This one's gonna be more controlled, much more crisper edges and outlines, and the kind of layering of colors should hopefully um, allow me to get sort of some effects um, that you'll be able to see later when I start getting some dark areas and light areas by filling in certain layers uh, that perhaps I couldn't do if I was doing it in the same kind of wet into wet effect that I was using um, on the, the previous video. This approach is quite time consuming because of course you're putting in all these pale layers, you've got to let it dry and then put on the next layer and so on. So you might be like, oh, it's really time consuming. I've got the patience for that kind of approach. But it does give you a bit more wiggle room um, to make mistakes and get things wrong uh, and be able to perhaps more easily fix those mistakes because I haven't gone in so dark with the paint to begin with that, uh, you know, it's completely, you know, I can't save it. You know, I can save these if I make a mistake working in this way. So here now that everything is dried, I can start going in and putting second layers of color. So here I am with the size three round brush and I'm just working in this small area here that doesn't need a lot doing to it. If you look at the photo, you can see it's very pale layers of color. So this is a bit I'm working on now. Um, small area as usual. So if something goes wrong, I'm not messing up a big bit. So I'm just trying to figure out how to do this. So this is exactly the same color that I used to do the first layer with. So remember, I mix a lot in that palette, it's still there. So all I'm doing here to make these areas a little bit darker is to layer up with a second layer of the same violet dioxidine um, wash that I mixed in the first place. And what I'm trying to do here is just put on a bit of color either side and leave that strip down the middle. If you look at the photo again, you can see what I mean. There is that light strip down the middle. And then I just drop in a couple of blobs of paint at the top where I think it's a little bit darker and they should then sort of run a little bit downwards. So we're gonna give it a very gentle dark to light tone. Now this top bit where a petal comes up, curves over and, and hangs over, I'm going in here as well and I'm adding a second layer of exactly the same wash of violet color again, just to make some bits darker, leaving some bits so that they're gonna just be the original first layer of pale violet wash but I'm going over some areas and making some bits a bit darker. And you can see it's nowhere near as dark as it is in the photo yet, but you know I'm working my way up with layers. I'm putting on layer and layer and layer, giving myself room to kind of maneuver and you know perhaps get things wrong. So here I'm doing the petal, and this is where I'm gonna be a little bit trickier and try and use the effect of layering, because what I'm gonna do is leave 
some of these small pale lines that you can see, almost like whiskers that come out from the very center of the orchid and spread outwards towards the edge of the leaf. I want to leave those white lines in somehow. So the way I'm doing it is as I'm doing this second layer of color on the orchid petal, I'm kind of leaving those lines. I'm not painting the lines. I'm kind of painting around them, if you will. And I've also switched back to the size six brush here so I can work quickly. But of course, the point of the size six does give me quite a bit of precision. So I can be careful and delicate with the lines that I'm trying to paint in here. But because it's a size six and it holds lots of water and lots of color, I can actually do this bit quite quick. So I won't get any drying lines or I shouldn't get any big fat uneven patches of color. I still have to be very careful though because the size 6 brush does hold a lot of water and color and it will be easy for me to just completely splurge that color and destroy one of those lines I'm trying to leave if I'm not careful enough. So I'm trying to get the way that they come out from the center and they gently curve either upwards or outwards um, towards the very edge of the petal because that's an important detail on both of the petals, this one and the, the one on the right hand side that I'll do in a bit. So I really want to make sure that I get those lines in and that I don't completely, you know, destroy them by putting too much paint on. So then all I do is have to, you know, use the size six, lots of lovely um, um, purple wash on the brush there to just fill in the bottom half of this petal before I start looking at the others. But I feel I have put on a little bit too much paint in this middle section. So I blot it quickly with a bit of tissue paper and then get some more paint on the brush and start trying to um, re-put reconstruct those lines, get those areas of color in and those lines in, just to make those lines extend, these sort of pale lines that I'm trying to put in, these whiskers that I talked about, try and make them extend a little bit further towards the center. Probably being a bit too fussy if I'm honest. Um, so then I've got to figure out how to do this bit on the right hand side. Now this petal is a lot paler, but because I'm working in layers, I can use just use exactly the same kind of color that I've used on the left hand petal to do the right hand petal. Because I know in future, I can make that petal on the left, the one that looks really dark in the photo, I can make that darker by just adding more and more layers in future. So the two are going to look very similar in terms of their purple tones until we get to a sort of halfway stage where you can see me working more on the one on the left to make it darker and leaving this one on the right to keep it nice and pale so you get that kind of dark light balance that you've got in the reference photo. So you can see what I've done here. So I've started in the middle so I can perhaps show a uh, one of these pale lines that runs right across the middle and then I've worked into the downward section and just filled that in with uh, my wash of winds of violet dioxidine first. Now I'm going to work upwards, do the top half, and uh, leave some of these pale lines. And like I said, this one virtually runs uh, right across from one side to the other. I'm trying to be really careful not to just destroy it and, and paint it out, just keeping it nice and delicate, nice and careful. And then I'll fill in, you know, another couple of them that you can see that tend to curve outwards and also slightly upwards as well towards the top of the petal. Now, if I didn't put the lines in this way by basically leaving them and painting around them as I did the next layer, I would have to do them a different way. And the way that I would have done them differently if I maybe wanted to, was I would have painted the petal full on with color and then used a synthetic brush and I would have just worked over the lines with some clean water on the brush, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and then blotted it with a bit of tissue paper. So what I would have been doing is almost rubbing out the lines or lifting up color using that clean water and synthetic brush to put in these pale lines. That's one way that I could have done that. Um, but I wasn't too sure about whether that would work. And I knew that doing layers like this would give me a lot more control about the thickness of the line, how thin or thick it was going to be and how delicate it was going to be. And I could just keep adding layers of color as I was going through to work around these lines, as you'll actually see me do on this video, uh, to make them stand out more, but also darken some of the areas of the petal that goes around them. So as I'm finishing up adding a little bit of paint on this petal on the right hand side, trying not to get a drying line, so I'm trying to work a little bit of wet paint back into some of the other paint that's hopefully still wet, just to blend it gently with the brush, you should be able to see that I'm already getting some clearly defined edges to this petal, and that's only having used two layers uh, of this violet dioxidine color so far. So the layering effect is working, but yeah, I've still got room to improve. So 
So now that I've done those two layers of color and they're all fully dried, I'm really trying to look at darkening up, building up darker layers here. So I've mixed in my palette a slightly darker purple than the very pale purple that I used to do those first two layers. So I'm up in the ante a little bit and I'm using some darker purple here to put in because I can see that this 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 hooded petal that you know leans up and curves over, it's really dark in this bit. So I really need to start, you know putting those dark areas in. You know, I can add water to them, I can dilute them on the paper, and I can sort of brush them back and forth a little bit, lighten them up like you can see me doing right now. So I shouldn't be too timid. I've got to be a bit braver and start putting in some bolder, darker tones. And the other thing is, of course, when you're look, working in layers, you've got to you've got to work fairly quickly. If you're too fussy, then your brushwork will lift up the color layer that you did underneath. And that is obviously something that you don't want to happen. So I often find I'm wor working in layers, I work, yeah, fairly quickly putting the layers on, but I also try not to be, it doesn't look that way, but the bit I'm doing now, but I try not to be too fussy and too noodly with the brush and, and just keep working it again and again and again. Because if you do that, you're gonna lift the layer beneath it. But what I'm doing here is just putting on some of this um, violet mix that I've made and letting it run outwards, you know, a little bit of sort of wet into wet. And then when it's a bit too dry, get my brush in some clean water, get it back over here and just tease that bit of color outwards. So it's got a slightly dark to light kind of effect. But I've really got to start making some of these colors darker. Otherwise, this is going to take me like two weeks to paint. And I think that is one of the main reasons why a lot of people using watercolors just want to do the kind of splashy wet into wet and they don't actually want to work in layers. And I can totally understand that as an approach. It's very different. It's, it does take a lot more time. Uh, so, yeah, it can be frustrating at times. But <laughs> in some circumstances, it's just the right technique to use. So here you can see me start to be a bit bolder, be a bit braver, and start putting in some darker color for the shadow on this left-hand petal. I've really got to get in here and start putting the shadow in. So here I'm still using a size three brush, uh, but it's, as you can see, loads up with a nice amount of color from my palette, and I start slapping this in, moving this around, but I'm aware that I've got to get a bit lighter here, so I pop in some clean water because I've got to blend uh, the shadow on this petal, has got a softest, soft edge. You know, it doesn't suddenly stop being dark and then it goes light. It kind of, there's a fuzzy kind of edge to it. So I put in a bit too much water there and that's not gonna work. So I go back in, I get some more paint from the palette and I start flooding that in and dropping that in, uh, knowing that because I'm working into this wet area, it will have a fuzzy edge now. And now I'm moving more color down and around those pale lines that you saw me paint uh, previously. So I'm adding darker color now around those lines. So those lines are going to start to show up a heck of a lot more than they did before. So I'm actually making some of them a little bit thinner. <laughs> so they're not so, uh, so, so much power. They don't really jump off the page at you as much. A little bit more subtle is what I'm trying to do as I sort of paint around some of the brushwork here. But I'm conscious that I want to avoid getting any kind of drying lines between sort of dry paint and wet paint. So I'm working as quickly as I can um, in order to put the paint on, but work around these lines, leave these lovely little streaks, these whiskers as I christen them, um, leave these in and get my son, you know, nice kind of purple dark sardine around them and also paint it in dark enough where it needs to be. You can see me just drop in, teasing some little bits in there and hoping that the wet in wet will let them kind of flood outwards and bloom outwards a little bit. Um, to give me that kind of nice soft dark to light kind of effect because yeah I want the edges of the petals to be nice and sharp and crisp but you know the kind of tonal changes inside the petals and across the petals I want to be a lot more softer edge so I am kind of using a, a wet in wet approach on just the petal itself here to try and make sure that I get some nice soft changes of tone from dark to light. So that middle section there that I've just done is fairly light, so I'm trying not to work that too much. But as I work now into the bottom left-hand section uh, of the petal, I'm going to flood this with lots more color because this bit is really quite dark, as you can see from the reference photo. So I'm going to let you be scooping up big chunks of, of paint from the palette and slapping them in here to try and make this as dark, there you go, as it should be. So in the palette, I've got a lightish kind of um, layer of, of paint, a wash of paint in, but also a sort of darker wash of paint as well. So I can scoop up light bits or dark bits if they're needed for the bit that I'm working on right here. So I can make bits instantly dark with a little bit of dark wash without worrying too much 
uh, about making it too dark too soon. I start with a lighter color and then I put on the dark color like you can just see now, the dark wash, and hopefully wet to wet, they'll blend together and get some nice soft edges. So I leave that bit to dry and move on to this bit in between the petals again. And I just think that it needs a little bit more light wash in here definitely towards the top and then I use a little bit of clean water and just wash it downward. So here I put in a little bit of my light wash of purple first of all, then I take the brush, dip it in clean water, come back and just blend that edge out and upwards a little bit so it's going to be darker to the top and then lighter towards the center of the, of the flower. Doing this top little section here, again using a nice fine brush, just the size 3, and I'm just plumping in a bit of color and then a little bit of water to just blend that edge. And here I get a little bit distracted and I start putting a little bit of tone on this middle section, you know, the kind of that knobbly bit that's very, very dark on the reference photo. So I'm putting in some of my light wash and then some of my dark wash of color here to try and just give it a bit of shape. Uh, but I am getting a bit distracted. What I really should be doing at this point is moving over towards the petal on the left-hand side. But I've just gotten distracted. I've got the colors in my palette. So, I, you know, I just want to work a little bit of paint into this middle section. It's a picture. There's no right or wrong technically. Yeah, it's okay for me to do this. But in, in terms of the way I was kind of structuring the way I was approaching this video, I really just got a bit distracted there and should have just like left it. So now I'm doing the right-hand petal. And this is very, very much paler than the one on the left. And I talked about the need to, at some point, um, stop working this one over so that it would stay light and the one on the left would stay nice and dark. So here I'm using my lightish kind of mix of violet dioxidine from the palette again. And I've got to show those shadow areas where that petal that comes up and curves over is casting a bit of shadow. So that's what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to put in a little bit of um, light tone on here. So it's still going to show up as a kind of a shadow next to the, the other light um, tones on the petal. And then I'm going to use a little bit of water and I'm just going to kind of like tease out the edge of it so it it's doesn't stop at a, you know, a kind of very strong dark light kind of shadow. It's got a slightly softer edge to it, so a slightly more gradual change from dark to light. And then I also looking at the reference photo, I can see there is a little bit of tone in between those pale lines that I've done. And that's good because that will make them actually stand out a little bit more if I can put a bit of dark tone in between them. So again, what I'm doing here is just using my lightest um, wash of um, violet darkstein from the palette. And I'm just putting in a little bit more of that light wash. And then I'll go back put my brush in the water, get a little bit of clean water on it, and then just add that and just blend it in at the ends so that it goes sort of from dark to light and I'm not left with a really, really dark kind of, you know, hard edge. So I'm trying to do this quite subtly. And now I can see that there's a bit of shadow on the bottom of this right hand petal as well. So that's what I'm trying to put in now. So I'm using again my lightest wash. So it's like my third layer on this particular petal. Uh, and I'm just putting this in and I'm just going to have this shadow where the petal underneath would overlap. So you're getting two petals in thickness and that's why it looks kind of like a darker purple. Uh, on this one that you can see on the right hand side. So I'm just trying to paint that in nice and carefully, nice and subtly, and then put my brush in the water. I go back up to this one to try and just soften that edge with a bit of clean water a little bit. It's, that can be a bit dangerous. I could get a drying line doing that because it looked like it was already dry. This one at the bottom, a bit easier to do because it's still wet. So I just get that clean water on the brush and I just fade and tease that edge bit out a little bit. Dropping in a little bit more color here now while it's wet into wet, trying to correct that bit with my finger where I went over. Just dropping a little bit on the edge here so it will form a stronger um, kind of line between this petal and the one underneath it, which is a lot paler. And because it's wet into wet, the, the two sort of light sections of color just flood together a little bit. I noticed that this bit at the bottom, this, this bit in the background petal, I didn't like it, it was too dark. So what I decided to do here was get my synthetic brush clean water on the synthetic brush and start working this area a little bit. What I'm looking to do is lift up the color and that's why you can see me putting the tissue paper on there. I'm just trying to lift that color up to make that petal look a bit paler. It was just bugging me. It was just looking too dark for, for a background petal. So just a bit of blotting and lifting out. So we're going a little bit closer here and I'm pleased that I'm beginning to get some depth in the petals. You know, I'm starting to feel a bit of 3D because I'm adding darker colors, but I'm still aware that it's not dark enough. So here you can see me layering in some more of the dark mix of violet dioxidine that I've got on the palette. 
because I've really got to do something to make this petal at the top look a little bit darker. So I'm plopping in bits of dark color, but getting ready to just smooth them out and tease them out a little bit by adding a little bit of uh, clean water on the brush um, when I need to, because I'm still worried I'm going to make it too dark. But as you can see from the photo reference, it is really dark, and I have to be brave with this and try and make this, the shadows on this are some of the darkest in the entire, um, on the entire flower. So I've got to be brave. And I've got to be a little bit more assertive, otherwise this is this picture is going to take me a very long time to do. So, I, you know, from those early washes that were very, very pale, you know, you can see that I am getting darker with these colours. and um, still perhaps struggling to get as dark as I really should make them, but I am trying to build this up in layers. And so I am trying to not make too massive a leap in terms of the tone, going from light to dark a bit too soon. So I'm using sort of like mid kind of range um, mix of, of my violet color here and then just sticking it on and then adding a little water just to kind of blend the edge in a little bit make the edge bit a little bit softer but you know I'm still dropping in more blobs of color here because I'm aware it's got to be darker so that's what I'm doing trying to be a bit braver and drop those little blobs of violet in along the edge and this kind of highlights some of the issues you get with watercolor because when you're putting watercolor on and it's wet, the colors always look a lot darker and you think, oh yeah, that's looking fine. That's looking just as dark as it's supposed to be. And then obviously as they dry, they often get a lot paler and a lot lighter. So you can come back to a piece of work when it's dried and be like, oh man, I thought it was way darker than that when I was doing it. And it's kind of tricked you. So you might think that what you've got to do is kind of overcompensate and go really, really dark to begin with, knowing it's going to get paler. But that can obviously lead to, you know, quite obvious complications and issues. So, you know, I'm preferring to take my more cautious method here of building these things up in layers. If it's too light later, then I can just add another layer on top of it because I'm using nice, thick 300 GSM paper. So here you can see me move on to do the shadow that I did earlier and I didn't think it was dark enough. So this is me adding another layer of my um, darker wash of violet dark sardine um, so I can get that shadow in. And then I'll just use a little bit of clean uh, water as well along the edge of the brush uh, in order to blend in the edges here. Yeah, so it's not such a really, really stark edged shadow. It's slightly more soft edged, but it's still significantly darker than it was before. It's actually becoming a shadow now rather than just sort of, you know, slightly darker bit of color what it, what it looked like previously. And here you can just see me dropping in a few extra little bits of color while it's still wet, hoping they'll flood outwards. And then I get distracted again. So instead of finishing off that left hand petal, I suddenly start working on this knobbly bit in the middle of, again, probably because I'm, I'm just aching to do some stuff that's a bit darker paint. So I'm like, oh, I know this bit here is going to be quite dark. So yeah, I just move over and start putting some, uh, you know, darker violet dark sardine on this section and trying to blend it in a little bit with a kind of clean brush, just because I want to put some more paint on and see some darker proper purples. But then I realized my mistake and I jump back over to this petal and I start filling in the areas that I need to do darker on this left hand petal again. So again, I put in a big splodge of um, darker wash and then just blend in the edge gently with the brush using a bit of clean water on the brush. Because like I said earlier, the middle section of this petal is quite pale. It's got shadow towards the top, shadow towards the bottom. So I'm putting on the shadows areas and then using clean water to just blend out those edges and just make them change gradually from dark to light but put on a lot of darker color now in this bottom section, being really careful to try and leave that light line in there, the little whiskers. But, you know, getting in here, getting lots of paint on the brush and putting it in here, trying to make it as dark as I can, like I said, so that when it dries, I don't go, oh, did I even paint that section? And because I'm still not sure I've added enough dark paint here, I do splodge in a bit more dark areas. You can just see me putting in a little bit more dark paint here. Some of that is even raw paint straight from the half pan in order to make that petal a lot stronger, a lot darker. This one over on the right hand side, I'm looking at the photo reference. I'm thinking, well, it is a bit darker, but I've got to be careful here. So I put on some of my um, wash of Windsor Violet and I'm just gently blending in the edges of this one as well because I want it to have slightly darker patches but again those patches need to softly change from being dark to light so so I'm using clean water on the brush to try and blend those edges and then doing the stalk in the center here the bit that attaches down to that really alien orangey yellow thing that I'm going to be painting in the third uh, video in this series. 
So I'm liking the shadow areas on the left hand petal, they're shaping up nicely, but the ones on the right hand petal are still not dark enough. So, you know, fourth layer on this particular shadow area. Am I being too fussy? Well, I am obviously looking at the photo reference the whole time and I'm comparing everything, you know, tonal wise to the photo reference. So it does look a bit darker in the photo. So I'm trying to make it a bit darker by putting in some of my light wash, a, a Windsor Violet Dioxazine again. And again, just using that clean water to kind of tease out the edges so I don't get any really, really hard edges, like a really, really hard drying line or anything. But I'm aware that I've got to make those shadows a bit darker. So that's why I'm going in again with this fourth layer of color. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that is commitment right there. <laughs> well, yeah, it is commitment because I'm committed to this method, this way of approach with this painting. So I've kind of got to follow this through to the end now. Um, I could start slapping in big chunks of really, really dark color, big swathes of it all over the place, but that's probably going to ruin this quite subtle layered effect that I'm trying to go for. And I think I've probably pushed the envelope of making a layer, you know, quite a lot darker, about as much as I could on that left hand petal, which is obviously a lot darker. This one, this side, I've still got to deepen those shadows, but I can't lose the kind of real fragile, delicate, transparent nature of this petal. I can't lose that. That is what makes this one stand out more perhaps than the one on the left hand side. So yes, as I'm deepening the shadows with another, you know, um, chunk of color there and obviously softening the edges as it gets, you know, up towards the middle of the petal, I've still got to be careful not to make it too dark. You know, I keep looking back and forth at the photo and I'm looking at the photo thinking, well, yes, it is a, it is a shadow area, but it's nowhere near as dark as the shadow areas that are on that left hand petal. So at this stage, you've figured out that the way that I'm deciding how dark and how light all of the tones need to be is I'm, I'm basically comparing one half to the other half of this orchid flower. You know, like I said, the dark half on the left and the lighter half on the right. So everything gets compared. And because I've done the darker side first, that kind of helps me gauge how dark and how light all of the light tones and the mid tones on the left hand side of the flower need to be. Uh, if I'd done it the other way around, then, you know, again, the balance could be wrong. I could have done it a bit too dark on the right-hand side straight away, making it really dark on the left-hand side. It's always a delicate balance in any kind of painting, whether it's watercolor or whatever, to try and make sure that your tones, um, you know, work and balance with each other, uh, and they're not too dark and not too light, and, you know, there's perhaps a massive contrast between them. Here at the top, I've decided that the white highlights that I left on the very top of this petal were too bright. So I get my lightest um, mix of violet dioxazine and I'm just gently putting that over the entire bit of painting there as kind of a lightish layer. And what it does is it takes out the bright white paper white highlights that I left behind. But because it's only a very thin layer, it still shows up as the lightest tone there at the top, but it just takes the edge off from being a bright white highlight. So that really emphasizes the bright white highlights, the paper white highlights on that petal at the top right hand side. Now you can see me working down into this petal at the bottom. This again is one that's very, very light near the center of the flower, but then as it goes outwards and works out towards its extremities, it's in a lot more shadow. It's being shadowed by that petal above it. So I've got to, as I work downwards here, start introducing a little bit more dark color from my palette. So, you know, remember I've got that slightly darker wash next to the lighter wash. I start to introduce more of that darker wash here to make this petal start to get darker and darker and darker. And then also when I can see it's not dark enough, I start putting in some raw color straight from the half pan. So I'll just get the brush, I'll just put a quick dab in the half pan and then transfer that lovely pure bright dark color over into this and start working it back and forwards, a little bit back and forth because it's wet into wet. So hopefully as I dot these little bits of darker color in here, it will um, you know, just flood, like I say, gradually outwards. So I'll get this nice gradual change from dark to light as this petal kind of sweeps up and up towards the middle. And as I finish up just doing this last little bit here, the next bit I'd have jumped to is yet yeah, a fifth layer of shadow on this topic. I haven't got it right yet. It's just not how I want it. It's not satisfying. So I go back in with a kind of a mix now between my lightest um, Winter Violet Dioxazine from the palette, a kind of a mix between the lightest and the medium. So I've kind of blended the two a little bit together to make a slightly darker wash because I'm hoping that this time I can do it and I can 
you know, put it away and it's done. So I'm trying to do this shadow. I'm popping this in, this kind of mid-tone of uh, Windsor Violet Dark Sassine. And then I'll get the brush and I'll pop the brush into the clean water and then bring it back over and gently kind of like tease out those dark to light areas along the edge of these little uh, stripes. But I really, I'm really hoping that this time it's done because I don't want to have to put a sixth layer on. I mean, it's working quite well. The paper is standing up to it. The paint's looking okay. But I'm a bit worried about having to put on, you know, a sixth or seventh layer if it's not quite going right. So I really want to put it away now. This little bit in the section, still, again, not satisfied that they're as dark as they should be. So I put in a little bit of dark towards the top again, and then put in some light, clear water, clean water, and just blend that edge down towards the bottom. So again, like I said, I hopefully we'll end up with a gradual change from it being a little bit darker near the top of that middle space, and then gradually getting lighter towards the knobbly bit in the center of the orchid. And again, that's just me being a bit fussy, you know, comparing to the photo reference, thinking, well, I yeah, could do to be a little bit tonally darker. And that's just a judgment call. You might have just thought, no, it looked fine as it was. But sometimes you can just see it and it's kind of niggling away at you. You've got to do something about it. But I don't have to be half as timid with this, um, the knobbly bit in the centre, because you look at the photo reference, you can see that is really nice and dark. It's one of the darkest kind of purple tones in the pictures I've mentioned. And so this time I can just go right in there. And I'm using quite a dark mix that I've got in the palette of uh, the Windsor Violet Dark Sassine, kind of sweeping this around, dropping in some other bits of like slightly darker colour, using this sort of clean water on the brush to just blend it gently up towards the top to make it slightly lighter on that top edge trying to give it some depth so it really looks like it stands out a little bit. You know, it's popping out from the center of this flower and the picture is not flat. So also trying to put in a little bit of just tone around this edge here. So you can see that these lighter petals behind all of this stuff going on have got a little bit of um, depth as well, you know, going from dark to light. So they're curving. So there's some shadow on there. So just putting in some very light bits of wash and then mixing in some clean water. And that's what you can see me doing here on this petal. I'm putting in a little bit of dark because I can see there's like a crease in that petal. So I really want to define that crease. So I put in a little bit of darker um, Windsor Violet. And then I just use some clean water on the brush just to blend along that edge a little bit. So it's dark along an edge. And then it gradually changes from dark to light as it sort of sweeps back into the rest of the petal. So that was how I painted the flower using that kind of layering technique of watercolors. Uh, it can be quite time consuming. Uh, so let me know in the comments below what you thought of the layering approach, what you thought of perhaps the length of the video, whether you think I should have shortened some stuff, uh, maybe transitioned some of the stuff that maybe you thought was a bit too repetitive. Let me know in the comments below. And also don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And if you do subscribe, then you will make sure that you won't miss the third and final part of this uh, video series. And that will show some super big fat close-ups, like you can see in this sneak peek of how I painted the weird, strange, horned alien type shape in the middle of this orchid. Thank you for watching.